Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome along. I, th I thought we'd look um, a little bit sparkly today because it's only a week till Christmas, isn't it? It's come around really quickly this year. Um, this one has certainly come around quickly, so sorry for the short, um, but it's really effective as well. So who have we got? We've got Joella from Florida. Hello. Um, Jack is on time. Hello, Gay3. Uh, I hope that's how I pronounced your name. It's a lovely name. Um, hello, Julie and Cheryl and Kate and uh, Debbie and Debbie and Mary McHugh and Jean and Helen. It's like the the introduction to, um, do you remember? Brew, brew, Bolly McGrew, Cuthbert, Dribble and Sid. Um, sorry if I miss anybody when I'm saying hello. We've got, uh, oh, Gaither is in uh, Melbourne in Australia. Hello to you too. What time is it there? What's your weather like? Are you having a sunny Christmas? Um, Sharon's just got in from shopping morning. Hi, Sarah. Uh, loving the spell. I thought I'd make an effort today. I, actually, I've run out of things to wear, so I thought I'd put my Christmas jacket on. Um, hello from soon Australia. Hello, Marita in Germany. And uh, Mary's in Paxos. Hello. What's your weather like in Greece? Hello in Am Ammonford. I don't know where that is, Kath. Where's Ammonford? I've not heard of that one. Uh, Merry Christmas, says Jean. Hello to you too. Trumpton, that was it. <laughs> Trumpton or Camberwick Green, I know it was one of them. Um, hello, Pam in Stoke on Trent. Um, haven't had to catch you for a while in the hospital. Oh, I hope you're okay now, Debbie. She says it's six o'clock in Harrow in Ontario. Um, oh, thank you very much, Geraldine. Not feeling it, but you know. Hi, Kath. Uh, now this is, um, if you weren't aware, if you're watching on YouTube, it's not very much different, but um, this is Half Yard Club Week. Um, we normally go live on uh, Facebook and, the Half, and Half Yard Club Facebook page. YouTube and half your other, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, on the last Saturday of the month, but of course the last Saturday of the month is Christmas Day, so we're a week early, um, which which threw me a little bit when I only realised a couple of days ago. It's the so long, I'm looking to sew. Um, we're good, thank you, Sam. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sharon in Melbourne. Oh, today is Christine's 70th birthday. Happy birthday to you. Um, thanks for joining. It's only a special birthday. That's that's special for us as well. Thank you. Um, hello, Sharon in Sittingbourne. Everyone says happy birthday to Christine. Um, Gray in Belfast says Margaret. Chile in Preston. It's um. It's, oh, you're getting happy birthdays, Christine, on Facebook as well. It's kind of a bit. Uh, it's not raining, but it's wet. So it must have been at some point. Very misty. A bit foggy. Not so good. Um, hello, Cherie in Idaho. No, no, Deirdre didn't make it. You could make this with that uh, rose gold um, sequin fabric, match your skirt, sequin from top to bottom. Right. Um, so, I loved it. I, th th do you know, December's come round quickly this year. Um, Leslie, never mind. Um, 11 o'clock coming round quickly this morning. Oh, I've got Bob with me, by the way. Bobbin. Bob. Bob. Bobbin. Bob. 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 Bobbin. Hello. <laughs> hello, good morning. I can say hello. Oh, I know. Hello to you too. You pretty girl. Even if you've got a wonky eye. I oh, know, it's too pretty. Doesn't normally speak, does she? That's enough then. Um, Linda's on her way for a booster. I had mine the other day. Sore arm. Um, I'm very good, thank you, Andrea. Our Steve um, said hello. I know she doesn't. She doesn't normally. She barks at the neighbours, but she doesn't normally bark in here. Um, right. So half yard sewing club. If you haven't heard of us before, I'm, I'm going to give you a quick overview because it doesn't seem very long since we were here last time, really. And I don't want to I want to bash on about it. Um, but it is an ever-growing sewing club and in fact I can show you some of the projects. Um, basically for £5.99 a month or whatever that translates to in the country that you are, because uh, this is worldwide, you'll get a main sewing project which will arrive with you, will arrive on the website on the first of every month and that, that will be anything from uh, bag making, dress making, um, quilting, um, homewares, 
um, and it'll be different every month and that will have all of your step-by-step -step instructions and a video. There will be things to download for most of the projects but nothing to post out. Everything's done online so that we can target everybody in the world no matter what country you're in. Um, halfway through the month, so around about the 15th, you'll get a second project and um, that will be um, all of your instructions, pattern if necessary. It's normally a simpler project, no video for that one. And then you'll also get a block of the month. Um, if you do join, Debbie, that is, that's Robin, and yes, that's one of the Half Yard Club projects, so you will get that one if you join the Half Yard Club. Morning, Lisa. Oh, before we move on, I was waiting for you to come. Look what Lisa made me. You know, she said the other day, um, have the post arrived yet? Look at what she made me. Oh, it's beautiful. So, oh, she's absolutely gorgeous, Lisa. I'm, I, I, I absolutely love it a bit. She hasn't got a name yet. But yes, Lisa made that. Isn't that clever? I'm going to sit her there, which is beautiful. So the day that you join, um, you will have access to two years worth of projects. So including the block of the month, that would be um, or 48 projects and then another. We don't take the block of the month down. So you've got three, three, three years worth of block of the month. Can't count that many at this hour in the morning. Shush. Um, so, yeah, and we, you keep all of those, those projects there for two years. So whenever you join, whether it's now or next year or, you know, June, July, whenever it is, you'll have a backlog of two years worth of projects. And I just wanted to show you a few of them. So I've done a little bit of this look. Um, so you can see, I, mean, I, just, I just randomly went through some of the pictures. Um, it's not all about bags. So there are some different styles of bags in there, um, but we've got quilting, there's the dressmaking, you can see the top that I'm wearing in the centre. Um, th these are all the things that you'll have right now, uh, and more so, so I'm just going back this year and 2020 as well. Um, there's the cutlery holders, which was uh, this month's project, the one which is a Christmas wrap. Different um, styles of um, sewing different genres of sewing the grey cushion there is english paper piecing um we've got maddie the rag doll there's a skirt which you you make to measure we've got the whole wonky series as cushions and the door stops as you can see um, there's going to be things for the home there's going to be things for the sewing room and there's going to be things for you as well with the block of the month these are the three previous ones so the half square triangles um, quilt was the first quilt that we brought you. The one in the centre was um, 2019 and the seminal on the left hand side is the 2020. All of the quilts have been designed by my good friend Melissa Naylor. And I'll show you actually because I've got some of them here. This is what you're going to get in January. Um, if you're a member of the club, you'll have had all of the details on the website for everything that you need to make it. But if you haven't seen it, I think she's excelled herself this time. Look at this. So all different types of applique and patchwork. So am I, am I on? That's better, isn't it? Um, so there is a little bit of English paper piecing, foundation paper piecing, raw edge um, applique. It's not a massive quilt. And this one is a little bit different because um, there's 13 blocks but you'll have all of the blocks by November and your December is making up the quilt. Okay, so that's what you're going to get in January. You'll, in fact, you get two blocks in January. You'll have, let me show you up here, the Joy block, which is this one. And I think, I think I've got this right. It's the log cabin. So you'll have two blocks, but they're quite simple. Um, there's a lot of you I know that are, are making this for the first time because you've told me never made a quilt before but you want to make this one actually my daughter Kim wants to make this one as soon as she saw it she said I'm making that not made a quilt before not a, a big quilt but I'm gonna make this one um, but you do have there's no video for this but you do have full instructions they're really comprehensive and it's only one block a month so it's not like you've got to make the whole thing all in one go um, so that's next year's so that's two weeks away isn't it like that it's gone quickly um you'll also have access to this year's which is this one which is more of a, a bed runner what are you doing you're digging in your bed aren't you 
which is this one. So again, each one of these sections is a block. So you'll have access to that as well. And I don't have the half square triangles one. Oh, she's nesting like a like a cat. Oh, and she sucks things as well. Do you have pets that do that? She loves a cushion or a bag or even a bit of plastic. Plastic bags, she loves them and she sucks them. What are you doing, you daft dog? Bobbin? Bob? Bob? Is that comfy now? Honestly. And then this one, uh, say, so was 2019. And again, one block per month. But you, we don't take these down, remember. So all of the projects that are there, they're for two years but these will stay there. So if you wanted to make, and that's upside down, I know, I'm sorry about that. That's another one with lots of different techniques in it as well. That's just the block of the month. Sorry, let me go through and, and see your messages. Because I'm, I'm talking a lot, aren't I, this morning? Um, stuck in Folkestone today, the roads are gridlocked because, oh gosh, yes, of course, I'm trying to sort of stand still. Oh no, oh, I hope you're warm enough. Um, I'm glad you like the block of the month fabric. Um, Annie, lovely. Um, Merry Christmas, says Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you for your support. Oh, thank, thank you, Carol. Made an effort today. I scrubbed up. Um, hello, Eve. Hello. Oh, Bobbin's lovely. Oh, she's gorgeous. Now, what you got? Needs a walk. Um, Sorry if I missed any messages, but we do go back through these later on. Jen had a, a cat who, who would suck jumpers, anything like this. She's, oh, she's got a stick now. Uh, finally moved on Thursday. Oh, Linda, that's taken a long time. Um, Deirdre's cat sucks a blanket. Susan's icing the cakes. How do you calculate charm pack quantity or layer cakes for a double quilt? I don't know. I don't know that one. Karen, I'm afraid. Um, is it for this quilt? I don't know if charm pads, charm pads, charm pads are 10 inch squares, aren't they? So yes, they should be big enough. I think the biggest, the biggest piece for the quilt is just over, or is it nine inches, nine or 10 inches? So you should be all right with charm packs. Um, <laughs> the night before. Do you know what I did last night, Lisa? I sat writing a ditty for Christmas because we are live on Christmas Day at four o'clock in the afternoon. So we're not, um, I'm not um, sewing anything, but we're gonna have a quiz. I've got lots of giveaways. There will be a little story to tell when I've written it and, uh, and your new ditty as well. So we're just, gonna have a, we're just gonna have a little bit of fun on Christmas Day. That's four o'clock in the afternoon, UK time. We do have oil, Sarah. Yes, we have heating in the house. And in fact, we have electrician and, um, and builder in the house at the moment actually finishing the living room. So we should be able to move in by Christmas. Oh, yes. Charm packs, five inches, layer cakes are 10. So charm packs are going to be too small for the block of the month for next month, uh, for next year. Thank you for correcting. I don't buy those normally. I, like to, I just get bigger pieces of fabric. Um, 3 a.m. and coffee's made, says Pookie. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's, it's Sheila. oh, we've got a Sheila who's 70 as well. Happy birthday to you, Sheila. Um, go to that ordering the Buckland Month. No Christmas decoration. Susan. Oh, yes, you did email me. It's in the post. It went out yesterday. You'll probably get it today. Um, cat loves the same room. <laughs> you drop your stick. I don't know. Yeah, sorry, got it wrong. No, John Pack's five inches, sorry. Uh, 42 pieces for the cutlery holders. Oh, I'm glad you like those. Yeah, so the cutlery holders were uh, last month. They would have been with you a couple of weeks ago. And I'm going to give you a tease for next month. Um, we're, we're going to do beanies. So you've actually got three projects. I'll show you in just a second. But we have a ladies beanie. We have a gents beanie. There's videos for all of these as well. And you've got the child's beanie, which is um, what you can see Robin wearing behind me. So these are those. So these are going to be with you January the 1st. I thought, to be honest, where did I put it? The sewing machine bag was a bit of an epic from the beginning of January, um, December. So I thought we'd make something a bit simpler, but something for the whole family. So that's the gents. 
you could roll only gents because it's it's big you could roll it back if you wanted to make a cuff and it is reversible as well and these are all made from fleece you could use um, a jersey but you do need some kind of stretch fabric to make these with um, so don't make them out of cotton you need, need some kind of stretch so it could be a faux fur or anything like that so that's the men's one and then this one is the ladies and they they might look similar but they're very different techniques to making this one to making that one and then finally is the child's which you could have you know they have these like longer ones and they go floppy over the top um, so there's different ways of wearing it and this one's made in jersey and it's got like a tassel on the top if you leave that off that could also be a reversible hat too and that one's made in jersey but you could make it in fleece you could make it in the faux fur so that's coming up in january and which is only two weeks away where's it gone and um halfway through the month i haven't brought it to show you because i forgot um it's a, a reese ups upcycled scarf and I'm not going to tell you what we made out of it, but we upcycled and knitted scarf. So we're going to do a bit of upcycling later on there as well. Um, happy Christmas to you, Yvonne, as well. Thank you. Um, it's not hard to send packages to Canada, Debbie. It's incredibly expensive. For the smallest of parcels, we, we, I mean, it's, that's not us depicting it. This is just what, what we charge. Um, you're going to be spending at least £30 on postage, which is why we, we, we don't normally bother, because it doubles the amount of... Uh, whatever you have to spend is probably more than that um, if you wanted a quote then drop me an um, an email um, to enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com oh Robin not oh she's found another stick um, morning princess morning star um, I'm going to buy a box going to buy a box quilt top if it's still available we, we do, if you go onto the debbie shaw sewing website we do have some um block of the month top kits still available when they go which they will do very soon um we will be getting some more in next week but they won't be delivered before christmas they should be with you by january but we can't guarantee christmas delivery anymore bobby is very she's picking up sticks and just chewing them up and spitting them out all over the place not normally this lively in the morning Right, shall we do a little bit of sewing? Um, right, so remember, I well, don't remember, can't remember if you weren't here. This is what we're going to make, if you weren't with us right at the beginning. Um, it's really, really simple. I've, I've chosen quite warm colours to make mine with um, because, they, because I like them, basically. Um, so I just need to do that. And uh, But you could make Christmas colours. Do you know, this bob... Stop! She's got Maddie's witch's hat and she's flinging that round. Stop it! Give it to a Jew. Give it to a Jew. You're lively. You want to play? Years and years ago, um, I went to. I've, I've always been um, a dressmaker. That's that's my background. So my mum was a dressmaker. She was a, a professional dressmaker. Um, so well, that's uh, the world I was brought up in. Um, I went to a, um, a class which was quilting and patchwork and this was one of the first things not this very one but one of the first things I ever made um, it was all hand sewn this isn't it's going to be a machine but every every single one was hand sewn um, and I d I've still got it somewhere I made a cushion cover out of it and then um, made a uh, some Christmas cards so I used Christmassy fabric and made Christmas cards with them and that must have been oh gosh 20 30 years ago I can't remember a long long time ago but every time I see them I just actually I'm going to do that again so it's not my design you know it's, it's out there um but it's just one of the things I, I, I just think looks really striking I think it's really unusual um Helen's got a problem with her iPad I think we're okay well we're okay here um for the quilt do we have have to secure a large piece of fabric or can we use different pieces of fabric along the way you can use whatever fabric you like, um, Carol. Um, the only large piece of fabric you're going to need is the backing. But the the quilt is, I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about this one. It's just over a metre square. So that's going to be the largest piece of fabric you need just for the back, unless you wanted to do a little bit of patchwork on the back. Every one of these pieces is individual. So that is 
probably the largest piece of fabric we'll need, which I think is 12 inches square. Actually, no, there is a larger one than that, isn't there? But these are, see, that's longer. These are all individual blocks. So you don't need one large piece of fabric. These are all smaller pieces of fabric just joined together. So I hope, hope that's what you meant, and I hope that explains. Hi, Andrew, thank you for the Christmas card. I haven't seen Kim yet to give her hers, but thank you very much. That was really sweet of you. What colour cotton do I need to order for the quilt? Um, I would personally use, let me see what Melissa's used on this one. What colour? A cotton thread, do you mean, or cotton fabric? Cotton fabric, any colours that you like. We've got white in the background. And then there are eight fat quarters. These are all listed on the, um, on the Half Yard Club. Um, website. You've got eight fat quarters of fabric for these. If you're going for the kits that I sell, they're long fat quarters, uh, but they're, they're sorry, they're long quarters, but they're still the same size. And then white cotton in the background. But if you, you can use any colour you like for these, you don't have to use what um, what Melissa's used here. You can use anything that you like. If you mean cotton thread, she's used like a cream colour. And then for the um, the outline, if you're going to do some of the raw edge applique like this one, she's used black. So I hope that explains. Right. Um, audio is not out of sync here, Lisa. I can't do anything about that, I'm afraid. Everything's going out from here OK. So that must be a an internet thing. So sorry about that. Um, that the quilt, quilt fabric. Oh, thank you, Carol. The Christmas trees on the wall behind me frame, or is it edged with bias blank? They're frames. They're all in frames, though. So, um, they are one of the projects on my YouTube channel. If you wanted to have a look, uh, Elaine says good day from so here in Panama City, Florida. It's supposed to rain for most of the day. Well, that's not that's not a very pleasant day. I always think about Florida as being sunshine all the all year round. Um, another birthday. We've got Celia Crook. Hello. Happy birthday to you. That's three birthdays. Anybody else got a birthday today? We might burst into song for you. Um, it's okay, Lisa. Um, thank you for the pink card. Oh, I'm glad you like them. Right, so I've put all of the cutting instructions on Facebook and um, if you've subscribed to my YouTube channel and click the alerts, you should have had Steve's okay. Oh, uh, good. Um, you should have had the cutting instructions as well because I thought so you're going to sit. You're going to sit and watch me fold fabric for ages now. I, d I didn't think you'd want to sit and watch me cut out squares as well. So I've already cut the squares out, but those were on the cutting instructions. If you wanted to have a, a sew along, um, right? So this is what we need to do. So first of all, I just say to have a little piece of scrap fabric. It doesn't matter what it is doesn't matter what colour it is, just a piece of scrap fabric that's big enough. And we'll just turn the iron on. And sunny but cold in Provence, apparently. Um, if you've got a fabric that isn't very crisp and doesn't iron very well, then dampen it. I put the iron down, look. Um, or a bit of spray start or best press, just so that it creases nicely. I'm just waiting for, you, for the iron to heat up. Moya's making seven reading book pillows for Christmas presents. Ooh, that's another stain. Um, Helen says happy birthday to everyone. Thank you. I'm, I'm saying thank you on behalf of everyone. Um, I thought it was my laptop. I don't know what what is up with the sink because um, going out all right from here. And just made five gnomes. Right. So we're going to fold this in half. Oops! So I've got some I've got some glue on my on my iron pad. So fold it in half and crease it. And then we're going to fold in half again and crease it. Let me know if anyone's sewing along, won't you? Oh, it's Ruby's birthday too! Happy birthday, Ruby! And then with the two folded edges, I'm going to fold that across again and crease that. Um, 
Jane subscribed to the YouTube channel, if you've subscribed and then there's a bell shape that you need to click the bell so that you get notifications um, and then you should get them. Carol's in Lincoln train station. <laughs> right. So we've got this. So that's going to form the centre of where our um, folded fabrics are going to go. And to get them in the right position, from the centre we're going to mark this. So we're going to go from the dot in the middle here, one and a half inches up, one and a half inches down. And then from that dot, three quarters of an inch, got three quarters, there we go. And from this one, three quarters of an inch, and three quarters of an inch. And we need to do this on every one of these lines. So one and a half, one and a half, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, and three quarters. You're not going to see any of these lines. It doesn't matter what you're marking them in. So one and a half, three quarters, three quarters and we're just going to do that all the way around and as accurate as you can with this because th this is where you're going to be lining up your triangle shapes just to get them all in the right position hello Susan in Alabama and oh, whoops where's one of that so the ruler is not very clear I hope I've got these measurements right. Mind you, it's, uh, when we start putting it together, it's pretty obvious where everything needs to go, really. Um, Jean got the block of the month kit, would you believe? You'd had it over a week and only just opened it. Things you can't do anything with it till you get your instructions, can you? So. <laughs> uh, that one. Three quarters. Three quarters. Oh, she's having a bar. And that's them all done. So that's uh, quite a quick process. Then we're going to take all of our squares. The smallest square is three inches, and we have five of those. I think I've got a few more than five, but there we go. Then the next one up is three and a half inches, and you'll need eight of those. Then four inches, eight of those. Four and a half inches, eight of those. Five inches, four of those. And then we need to fold all of these and press them. So with each square, we're going to fold in half, fold in half. So there's five of these, but I'm only going to fold four. Because the final one's going to sit in the background here. And then with every one of them, you're going to take the folded edge here and fold the two edges to make a point like that. So all your raw edges are on the bottom. And give that a press. And we need to do that with every single piece. I'll do them kind of a row at a time so you're not just looking at me folding and pressing for too long. So to the center. And press and again give it a spray of starch if it starts to fight back a little bit it's not quite straight and try and keep the points really nice and pointy so they've got nice sharp points there so here's another <coughs> and the last one of the three inch squares With this one, I'm going to fold in half diagonally just to crease the center and diagonally again. So I've got the center mark there and then that one's going to go right in the middle here, lining up those lines like so. And I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, basting spray. I'll just spray that over the bin to hold that one in place.
and then we're going to start to arrange the triangles over the top. Now I'm using a glue stick. When I went to class, we had to hand stitch here to hold it down and then a tiny little stitch right in the centre, which if you wanted to hand sew that, that's absolutely fine. These things are so much easier to use. So I'm just going to put a double glue here and here. If you wanted to machine sew these in place, and that's lining up with the edge here. Um, then sew down here like that. So one, that was a big blob. That was another thing with this um, class that I went to, or the course that I went on. Um, it, was, it was very traditional. And we were doing um, English paper piecing. And um, all of that hand sewing, you know, we had to cut out all our paper pieces out of brown paper and then um, hand tack all of the fabric around the paper. And I can remember saying to the tutor, um, couldn't you just glue it? Oh, the look, the look she gave me. I was nearly thrown out of class for even suggesting it. Nowadays, they make glue pens specifically for that. Um, don't use um, something like a print stick. If you're going to use a glue pen, use one that's specifically designed for fabric. If you put um, a piece of white cardstock on the roll, it's easier to read. That's a good idea. Um, I feel like like starch spray smells a lot. These are fragrances. It doesn't have got starch in it. This one's is Tea Rose Garden. But just dampen it if you don't want to use a starch. Um, how can I stop sequins falling off material while making a project? Who's our costume maker on YouTube? Is, that, is it you, Andrew? Do you make costumes? Um, any any tips on that? Deirdre, how did... So actually, our sequins, they, they don't fall off, do they? Any advice for Amanda, who wants to know how she can stop sequins falling off material while she's making a project? A friend of mine made a big cut patchwork quilt by hand. Oh, bet that took a long time. So that's what we've got in the centre there. And it's... That's, uh, the, the glue will just stay there, that'll hold it in place. So let's go around to the next line, and there are eight pieces on this one. Just going to bring my iron over to the right side. So, oh, bear with me while I'm getting unknotted down here. Don't seem to be getting. Oh, if this is noisy, sorry, I've just knocked my microphone off. <laughs> I've got my iron and my mic in a knitting position somehow down there. Right, so the next ones are the three and a half inches and we're going to do exactly the same on these. So, oops, get off, fold in half. And I'm only folding in half first because they're, they're of course rather hot. So these are cooling down before I do this. And then fold in half again, but with the edges meeting, so you get that nice point. And we need to do this with eight pieces this time. Andrew doesn't matter. Who makes the costume? We have a costume maker on YouTube. Sorry if I can't, if I, if I forgot. Um, sound wire macrame. That's exactly what is going on down here. Need to get some longer wires, me think. Dully Malaga says Pauline. Oh, that's a shame. Never been to Malaga. Um, oh, Eve always wants to know how to make this. Um, it's ever so easy, Eve. And I say it's not, not my design or anything like that. It's just something. It's a technique that I like. And um, the, the measurements, it's really simple. So all of the squares go up in half inch increments. So if you wanted to make it bigger, We've gone up to four and a half inch squares for my trivet size. Um, but if you wanted to make that bigger, just carry on in, in half inches. You can make them round as well. I'll, I'll show you that later on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A bit stuck if I haven't got enough, aren't I? Um, the orange is the next. Oh, you're right. You are so right, Linda. Orange is the next one. Oops. <laughs> I should have written my own instructions, shouldn't I? Thank you for that. I'll carry on and do these anyway. I'm glad you noticed. I did put them all on wrong. Mind you, they glued, so we just unglue them again. Hello, Linda in Ohio. She slept in late. 
What's late in Ohio? We are at 11.35 a.m. Tiny spot of blue pen. Oh, that's a good idea, Jenny. All right. This is interesting, isn't it? Just what you do, we're just folding bits of fabric. But it is actually quite quick. If you were to make these into a quilt, wouldn't that look amazing? I've not seen them made into a quilt. That would be amazing. Um, still making snowmen. <laughs> and if there's something else you could use for noses if you're having trouble rolling them up. Thank you, Anne. Hope you have a great Christmas too. Remember, I am here on Christmas Day, so I hope you can join me, particularly if you're on your own or if you're a bit bored. 6.30 a.m., gosh. Hi, Dorothy. Right, so orange is next. So again, eight of these. So has anybody joined the Half Yard Club today? Have you got anybody new this morning? Somebody maybe that, I mean, you don't have to join to watch these. Um, but is it the first time that you've watched? Come and say hello to us. Are you one of the many hundreds of you I know that, um, that watch every week but don't comment? Come and say hello. Just, just hello. Happy Christmas. What are you doing? Are you, um, are you on your own? Are you isolating? Are you okay? Oh, how many have I got? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more. I know I've got too many of those. That's eight. Elaine needs to renew. Oh, come on back to us. Andrea's don't look pointy enough. I tell you what, if you fold them in half, a bit more time consuming and crease the center point there and then maybe fold them down again would that help just takes a little bit longer to do so again you're on the on the folded edge mark the center and then fold them down And give it a give it a good old press. Linda's embroidering Christmas gifts. They sounds nice. Sounds nice. Hello, Sandra and Hastings. Um, Twenty to eight in Australia says Simone. Hello. Morning from New York City. First time catching us live. Hello, Crystal or Christelle. Is it lovely to hear from you? Um, Post is delivered a pink parcel to Helen. She's got a kit for the block of the month. Ellie's one of the silentish viewers. Hello, having a, a lie-in while child-free. <laughs> oh, I, I could think of loads of things to do if I was, well, I am child-free, because they're all grown up now, but um, when the kids were little, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a lie-in. I'd be getting on with stuff. Linda's joining the Half Yard Club today. Welcome along. We do gift vouchers as well, remember? Um, if you wanted to buy a last minute gift. The nice thing about gift vouchers um, is that um, they're instant. So if you get to Christmas morning, I haven't bought anything, um, then you get them there and then. So you don't have to wait for the post or anything like that. We do gift vouchers on the Half Yard Sewing Club website as well now. Uh, so Christmas is enjoyable, thank you. Oh, thank you, no, thank you for watching, Sue. There wouldn't be any point in doing it if it wasn't for all of you lot, would it? Uh, Carol's got a coffee. Beautiful here, Oop North, she says. Beautiful Oop North. My son is Oop North at the moment. He's on his way up to the Isle of Skye for a break with his girlfriend. He's, he's the one with the hat in the picture that you saw earlier. I think he was hoping for snow, but I don't think they're going to get it. Um, how did you pick the colours you used? I I think that's uh, that is a really good question, um, Deirdre. Um, I like the plain one because that stands out. Actually, this one stands out, doesn't it? I literally went <laughs> went to the uh, went to the office and picked out fabrics that that kind of matched, um, but I did want them to be contrasted. So they've all got the same kind of colour tones. Um, a plain one, I think, works really well. This one isn't actually plain, but it's got um, the prints rather sparse on it. It's that one. 
Um, so it looks quite plain. But if you did pattern, plain, pattern, plain, patterned, and I think that would work really well. But just put together the fabrics that you've got and see if it works. So, you know, it could be black, white, black, white, black. Um, all different shades of grey. Um, icy blue colours would be really nice as well. Or rainbow colours. They don't have to coordinate like that, I don't think. Julie, I have three children. Uh, my eldest is 40. That's David. He's married and he's got two children. Beatrix is six and um, Finn is one. And then there's Kimberly, um, who you know, um, who works with me, um, who has Vienna. And then Tyler is my youngest. Um, Kimberly's 31 and Tyler's 26. So, yeah, so that's, that's my brood, the three of them. Right, so we'll put the, the orange ones on next. I'm sticking to myself. Right, so just like we did before, I'm gonna put a generous blob of glue on the back and then we line the edge of the fabric up to the mark that we've made here with the points all lining up on top of each other. So I'm going to do Make sure I get some glue right on the points. I'm going to do four first. So again, where I made that three quarters of an inch mark, that's where that's going to go. If it doesn't look quite right, then just rearrange these. The distance between the edge of this fold and that one should be the same. So I'm going to go all around the edge ones first, like so. I don't think I measured that one quite right. And then this one, whoops, that is a big blob. Oh, we don't want that. Goes here. And again, the, the, the size of these should all be the same. I think that one just needs to move in a little bit. And then we'll fill the gaps in here. Just gonna do that. And again, I've got my three quarter line there. And here. And again, I'll pop these all down and then just make sure that they look okay. Because they're not sewn, so we can kind of maneuver those around a little bit. That's not okay. That needs to go up there. That mark there. This one. That's better. So that should be a star shape in the center. Again, with all of these points lining up. It does get quite thick. You've got quite a lot of um, layers of fabric here now. That's it. So I've got the star in the middle. And then the next one, so it's three inches, three and a half, four inches. I'll do exactly the same. So that goes on that mark. Points lining up. And that one. So you can really see it starting to come together, can't you now? And here, and we're just going to keep going all the way around like this. And I like to do the four opposite each other and then go back to the other ones. Let's just turn that around so I can see it. Yeah, I think I got the measurement wrong on that one. But again, you can, you can see all of these shapes should be the same, the same size. There you go. So it does come together really quite quickly. So these could be little um, placemats maybe. Nice again in Christmassy colours. Um, if you have an aperture card, then this could be a, a last minute greeting card, maybe a birthday card. Everything doesn't have to be all about Christmas, does it? That one there. And then finally here, then we're, going to, then we're going to do some more ironing again. Still got more squares to iron. Oh, thank you, Eve. She couldn't miss the, face, the half yard Saturdays and Facebook visits. Thank you. 
there's um you know a lot of time and effort goes into these and it, I, I love it I love being here on my Saturdays and Wednesdays and it's so nice that um, that you appreciate it. it kind of makes it all worthwhile that one just didn't look quite even so I'm just arranging that I think it's different when you look down on things isn't it that's better and then we're going to do some more ironing so this is the um, the last row for me. I have actually done a couple already. So I've got a, a bit of selvage on that one, but I'm not worried because when it's folded, you're not going to see that. There we go. And again, there's eight of these two. Bernadette says she's looking forward to seeing us on Christmas Day. So, are you on your own on Christmas Day this year? Well, you're not on your own, are you? Because we'll be with you at four o'clock, Bernadette. Um, oh, we, uh, that was up with, with our cats, Sue. We lost three this year, but they were all old. And I said they all get old at the same time. Two died within four days of each other. Um, folded side up. Yes, I am, um, Deborah. So you've got the fold down the centre here. Like that. They're going like that way up. You could put them the other way up, but I'm going to sew over this as well so the stitches disappear inside the creases too. You're bouncing back a bit, We're having none of that. There we go. Give it a... Oh. Stay down! <coughs> now you'll stay. Um, had hot chocolate at the start of the live. It's got cold hot chocolate now. <laughs> Um, Emily, we haven't got a Christmas tree up yet. I have a Christmas tree. I thought we, we do have one Christmas tree. We've got two Christmas trees up. We've had one Christmas tree up in our little sitting area since about July. Um, because you know what it, it's like in this world of um, TV and books and publications and things. You, you, the Christmas projects, you, you're making them in, in the summer. Um, so we put a tree up to do some photography. And it just looked nice, so we left it there. But we have got a bigger tree, not a real one, um, just waiting for our living room floor to go down so we can move back in and then get it decorated. So I'm looking forward to that. So how long have you had your decorations up for? We, we normally go for December the 1st. We're just really late this year. Oh, Bernadette's bought some fleece to make hats for friends. Is it the half yard club ones? They're, they're really quite simple. And you know, I was uh, uh, quite, quite selfish with those as well because um, I think I said the other day, my, when I go for a walk with Bob, if it's cold, I've got a woolly hat with a pom pom on top and I've got my thick jacket with a hood on. Well, I can't get my hood up over the top of the house and it needs it when it's really windy. Um, but it's itchy. That woolly hat is really itchy, so I'm scratching my forehead all the time. And the fleece isn't, it's nice and comfortable. So I thought I'd make myself a hat and then, um, and then share it with you. <gasps> Hello, Murray. Not moving now, Denise. Maybe in a couple of years. I'm not going through all that again at the moment. That was a bit of a nightmare. A very expensive nightmare, I have to say, earlier on this year. Um, oh, Delete Del is that? Going to try this. Loves my work. Thank you. Hello, Geets in uh, New Zealand. Right, let's pop this to one side. We're going to stick some more down. It's a little repetitive, this one. If this was um, a recorded show, then I think I'd just I'd speed it all up so it just can, came together really quickly. Right, so this is the last one. You can see it's kind of building up this circular shape. So let's... Oh, I'm running out of glue. I've brought, a, I've brought a spare stick with me, so let's pop that here. I didn't put a final mark for this one, did I? But again, you can, you can tell by eye, really, where these are going to go. So all of the points are lining up all the way down. That one's not, is it? And they're all the same distance apart. I'm just going to rearrange that one because the point wasn't lined up. That's better. So all the points in a row 
and all of these should be the same size. So I'm not you know, too worried if they're, if they're not perfect, to be honest. Depends what you're going to do with it. It's not going to be entered into a competition or anything. So I'm just going to change whoa, my glue on this pen. So just, just bear with me a second to run out. Lost my rag to it. Oh, cat lonely. Oh, Linda, I'm sorry about that. That's awful, isn't it, when they go? Um, oh, Jenny, that's not a surprise then, is it? But I hope you like them. She, she's really excited to get three of my books from her daughter for Christmas. That is a very nice daughter you have. Um, so I'm missing your comments again. Um, get you sent to see my friend in Sky. Ace Target Centre. Steve Miller will keep him right and take him to secret places tourists don't get told about. Myra, I might just tell him that. I think he's, uh, he's got a few things booked. I can't remember what. I know he's got a restaurant booked for tonight. Um, but yeah, 10-hour drive. They did break it up. They stopped off in Dumfries on the way up there. Uh, what happened to your move? We made an offer, it was accepted, and then everything fell through, basically. But it took months for everything to fall through. So we put the offer in. We sold our house the day after we advertised it. Then uh, put an offer in on another place about a week later. That was accepted. Then, um, oh, different things happened down the chain. Um, people were pulling out. People couldn't get mortgages. It was just... It just went on and on and on and on and on and so we just thought this is ridiculous it's not fair on anybody so um we called it a day it was awful but you know things happen for a reason sometimes you just don't know what the reason is do you maybe we just weren't meant to move at the moment okay so i've only got a couple more to do here and you can see i'm kind of getting a, a circular shape going on so if you wanted to make this circular, you'll need a template. I'll measure it for you in just a second. I think it's about eight inches across. So if you've got um, a small side plate or something like that, would be ideal. There we go. Um, ruler. Yeah, if you've got an eight inch um, circle template, then put that over the top and you can cut out a circle. We're not making a circle, we're making a square, so we need to extend these corner pieces to make it square. So these are the four five inch pieces that I have. This will need trimming down, these will be a little bit too big. But instead of folding them in half from side to side, this time we're going to fold in half diagonally. And just like before with the folded side, we're going to fold these down to create a point here. Now like so. Oh, Marilyn's expecting a create and craft delivery with my pet fabric. And then that's going to go in the corner like that. So now I've created a square. So again, we'll do these with all four pieces. So point to point this time. And these are the five inch squares. And, oh, I didn't cut that one. Uh, let's cut that off. And point to point again. And with this one. And then fold the raw edges together. So it's just the folded edge I've got in the center here. And keep that point nice and pointy. That's going to go there. Oh, thanks, Keats. Keats learned to applique from me. That's a... That's a book I've got coming out in a couple of years. Um, Flora MacDonald's Grave and Heritage Centre on Sky is worth a visit. Ah, I shall pass all of these on to him. 
if he well he's, I, I keep messaging saying what's it like you send me pictures what's the weather like and i think i'm just being a bit of a mum so it doesn't doesn't always answer me um right that's the last one there hi i'm muslima welcome back again we're all good here thank you please can reply to emily rackley uh, I'd like to buy a half your club membership for my mother-in-law as a way of doing a gift for yes Emily let me sh be before we go on because I think we've done enough of that for a second um, let me show you if I can do this oh come on there um, this is the half your club website and so I just need to move that out of the way for a second bear with me um, if you're not a member this is the, the the page before you sign in so I'm not logged in on this one um, underneath where it says join today buy a gift subscription so if you go on to there you don't need to be a member to do this you can buy three months for £17.50 six months for 33 or a year for £60 um, so those are the three options and then you've got either pounds or dollars um, those are the choices the recipient's name and email address and then your name email and your address down there as well and of course those are all of your card details so yes we do those are how much they are and again with the gift subscription you get those instantly um, and she can become a member as soon as she likes them but if it's if it's a christmas present i think it's quite nice because she's still going to have um, two years worth of projects and it's just in time for the the January projects which is the hat and of course that brand new block of the month that Melissa made as well so good good timing to join now and remember you don't have to be a member so you, you can buy a gift subscription without actually being a member of the club um, right so let's do this and these are the final bits just going to again making sure that those are all the same I'm still following the lines here and just filling in the corners now to um, to make the whole thing square ish I'm just going to hold those bits down as well because I'm going to sew over this in just a second and I think that might be quite helpful again if you don't have a glue stick you wanted to get on with this you can sew all of these sew quite close to the edge so you're not going to see them there we go and last one here you can stick down and you do you talk to your work and you can go there right then I'm going to I'm, I'm not going to trim this exactly I'm just going to take down um, a bit of the excess scrap fabric and I'm using a heat reflective um, it doesn't really matter whether it's heat reflective or not if you just use some wadding I'm just thinking if you're going to put something hot on here um, the fabric's quite thick anyway but I, it, it helps I suppose I still wouldn't put a very hot pan on top of this on top of a, a wooden table just to be sure that's what I'm looking for and I'm going to put a bit of um, spray glue on the back of here you don't have to you could pin it and that's going to go on there and then I'm just using a square of orange fabric on the back <coughs> And that's going to go there and I'm just going to iron that because I don't like working with creased up fabric personally there we go right then I'm going to sew ease these open a little bit and we're going to sew inside the seams here it doesn't matter if you see some of the stitches on top I'm sure I've like here I'm sure I have caught it, it doesn't really matter but if you can kind of sew right down the center then the stitches are going to be practically hidden let's just sit you back up there again what am I what am I going to call 
What am I going to call my, my princess mouse, do you think? Walking foot would be good. Right. You sit there. Here we go. So I'm going to lengthen the stitch. I'm going to go up to a 2.8 on this machine. And again, just start at one side, open that up slightly, and so straight down the center, through all of those points, straight across the middle, still pulling that open. Let's just lift it up a bit, push it back down, and that one. And we need to do this in all directions. So I can pull it open a bit and straight down. I'm using um, an orangey coloured thread so if you do see the stitches or I'm stitching outside the crease it's not going to stand out too much. But take your time with this one. Maisie Mouse, that's a nice one. And one, two, have I done that one? It's always easy to see from the back where you've actually been, isn't it? And then across diagonally. You can hear how thick the fabric is now. Point's not quite where I want it to be. There we go. And again, I'm not worried about seeing some of these stitches, but just pulling the fabric open a little bit helps them to sink inside the seams and this is the last one here I really enjoy making this and you know apart from the cutting of the fabric all of this has come together in um, in the hour um, with the bias binding, I, I met, it doesn't have to be biased, with the binding, that's just a two inch strip of fabric. So it doesn't have to be cut on the bias because it's not going around a curve. Um, and I did Mona Lisa Mouse. That's a good one. Is it Ravi, Ravi? <laughs> Stitch in the ditch would be a great idea as well if you've got one of those uh, feet too. So just make sure I've got all of those. Um, so with the binding on this one, I hand sewed the back of it. So I, I'll show you how I did it, but I'm not going to sit and hand sew all of that because you'll be really bored with me then. Um, but that's, that's how I did that. I'll, so I'll, we'll get as far as we can. So I'm going to trim this one down so that it's square. With me rib cutter. <laughs> Call the mouse Ginny because she keeps falling over. Are you, what are you saying? Um, now I'm lining up the my ruler with the center part here so I know that I'm going to be cutting it square and the same all the way around so move it over a little bit there so th this doesn't have to be an exact size it will be around about eight inches it may be a little bit smaller um, keeping it square is the main object so if you need to trim a little bit more away, then that's absolutely fine. I normally stand up to do this. And again, I'm just lining up the, the center so I know that that's square. Right, so that's that bit. Really pleased with these. Colors are nice, aren't they? Mary Mouse, oh, Mary Moose. Mary Moose. That was, uh, that was my mum's, not the moose bit, but the Mary bit. Um, so I know I've missed, I've missed loads of your comments, so sorry about that. I do like to, when you've taken the time and trouble to actually come and have a chat, I do like to reply to you, but um, if I miss you, I'll do go back again, try and pick up on your messages. Um, right, so I've got my two inch strip of fabric. This is way too long better too long than too short. I'm going to give this a spray because I want the creases to be nice and crisp. 
and then fold in half all the way down. You could use shop bought, I just think it's quite nice to have the same fabric. And it can be quite difficult to find exactly the same colour fabric if you're um, if you're buying from a shop. There you go, so in half, all the way down. And then we're going to fold the long sides to the centre and press it again. If you've got a bias bind maker, then that would be a nice idea to use it. Um, this technique, Deidre, uh, it's, th these are prairie points, so it's actually a, a quilting technique. On the um, seminal quilt block of the month, these are prairie points. They're, they're folded in a different way, but that's, that's generally, I think, how you see them. As a, as a finishing touch to an edge of a quilt. Um, but it's a prairie point star, folded fabric star. I don't really know what the exact um, description is, but they're, they're prairie points basically. Right, that to the centre. And we go all the way along. Ivy or Holly is a nice name. So this is um, Beth Press. It's um, it's a starch alternative, so it does the same thing as starch, but it doesn't actually have starch in it, and it's not an aerosol, it's a pump action, so if, you, if you're being a little bit um, planet-friendly, then aerosols aren't the best thing, are they? I know they use 505 spray, but it doesn't come in a pump. And it's scented as well, it smells nice. Tea bag folding. Oh yes, Karen! Um, I haven't seen tea bag folding for a long time. Is that is that still really popular? It's, um, folding paper, isn't it? Okay, so should have cut this down a little bit first of all, maybe, and then the second side to the centre. Oh, Mary, I did forget. Um, if you join the Half Yard Club, uh, just to explain with it with the, the two websites again, because I do get people asking questions. Um, the Half Yard Club is just the Half Yard Club. Uh, I say just the half yard club. It's not a shop, so there's nothing to buy apart from subscriptions on there. That's purely um, the subscription website with for, with projects. That's all project based. I'm getting water everywhere and it stains. Um, <laughs> my website or mine and Kim's website, which is DebbieShawSewing.com, is a shop. If you're a member of the half yard club, if you go to the about me page on the half yard club. Um, there is a coupon code that you put in when you go to checkout on the shop and you get 10% discount on anything even when we've got we've still got sale items by the way um if you have a look under christmas particularly kim's left everything for uh, everything christmas um on sale so that's worth having a look at so even the sale things you get your 10% discount on there as well thank you oh is a moose scottish for mouse there's a moose loose about the hoose Right. You could machine sew this if you like. I just think it looks nice for me, hand sewn. I can be more accurate when I'm uh, hand sewing than I can when I'm machine sewing. Okay, right. So I'm going to fold one end over by about half an inch. So open up the creases that you just made. And I like to start sewing with the crease right on the edge here because it, it kind of, if it was at the side of one of the points then it'll stand out an awful lot more than if it's sitting right on top here. And then I'm just going to sew in the crease. And we're going to mitre the corners as well. So you might have seen this before but um, I'll explain what I'm doing again. So I'm stitching along the crease line. It'd be easy to show you here first of all. Um, I have done this a few times, so apologies if you've seen it ten times before, but some people won't have done. Um, that's where, you don't have to mark this every time, but that's where the edge of my fabric is. And this is half an inch wide. I want to stop half an inch before I get to here. So this is the crease line that I'm sewing along, and I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to reverse back again and, and lock the stitches, and then cut the thread and take this out of the machine. So I'm just lining up the raw edges up to half an inch, go back, cut the thread, take it out. And then I'm going to fold the edge of the binding 
so that it's matching the edge here and this part is going to form a nice little triangle in the corner like that. So edges meeting all the way around, nice neat little triangle like so. And then we start sewing right on the edge of this crease again and carry on, stop a half an inch before the end and we'll do that until we get back to the beginning again. And actually if you sew a scant seam, so it's just slightly inside the crease mark, you might find that it sits a little bit better when you wrap this around the fabric. So again we'll fold that edge over, no we won't because we've run out of bobbin thread. Bright orange will do won't it? Then you get annoyed when, well I don't get annoyed, I just like phew. When um, you do a whole section of sewing and there's no thread in the bobbin. I must get one of those fancy machines that tells you when you're about to run out. Right, we'll do that bit again. I think if they're doing things twice, I don't like doing. And I've already sewn this, so I don't really want to do it again. Okay, that's that. Flip this over again. Connie, I haven't even had one. Did you get your mug, by the way? Connie was one of our um, Half Yard Sewing Club 12 Days of Christmas winners. So I, I did, I think I sent it out. What day are we? Saturday. I think it went on Thursday, so you might not have got it yet. But congratulations. Oh, congratulations to everybody that won something. You've got some nice prizes going out there. Free club memberships, bags that I've made. Brother Innovus. Oh, Karen's got a posh. A posh machine that warns you. They should do that on all machines, shouldn't they? You're running out of thread. They'll be talking to us one day. I wonder if they're doing those already. What would your sewing machine say to you? I'd like it to say, you're running out of thread. Give, give me just another couple of rows and I'll, I'd, need not, I'd need more thread. Or just a bit of encouragement from each Oh, that looks nice. Can you imagine? Or when you have sewn in a straight line. Oh, nice sewing. Oh, well done. <laughs> a bit of gossip. Sewing machine gossip. Oh, Helen, we were going to stock signed winders on the website. Must, must look into that again. Right, now when I'm coming up to, this is the final bit. So I've got my triangles, triangles in all of those corners. The foot pedal just migrated, bear with me. And then when I'm coming up to the bit that I folded over to start with, I'm just overlapping that by about half an inch. Let's just trim that back. And so on the same stitch line. No, Sharon, we've got we've got the builders in, so I think he's seen him this morning. He's, he's helping. Gary's very um, he's very good at um, doing things around the house. So um, we've got a builder putting down the rest of the wooden floor, but we've actually got stone tiles around the edge of the floor. So Gary's doing the stone tiles. So probably a little bit busy for me coffee. Oh, I love a mite at the corner. So now when you fold this back. Oh, look at that. Does it, does it, isn't that satisfying? Mm. So each one of these, when you fold them back, you get that lovely, neat mitre corner. And then on this side, we're going to fold this over and hand stitch it just over the stitch line. And when it comes to the corner, you can kind of manipulate it. So you get a nice mitre on the wrong side as well. So I'm not going to do all of this now. I will start off my stitching. So I thought I'd lost my pins again. They went on the floor the other day, didn't they? Um, just to show you what a slip stitch is that I'm going to use here. If you weren't aware. So let's there we go. Can't talk and thread needles at the same time. <laughs> 
Jane says her sewing machine would be saying, you call that straight? <laughs> I think my, my main machine in the house when, I, when I'm on the go sewing, I've, I, get, I, I do an article for um, Sew Magazine every month and it's like um, six tips to, um, I don't know, six tips to make a French start, six, six tips to do a princess seam, six, you know, it's all that kind of thing. And I'm always late. I'm always getting chased by the edit. Have you done it yet? Um, so I, I had a whole day yesterday of getting to grips with next, I haven't done them all, but getting to grips with next year's um, hints and tips pages. Um, so I've been doing an expo zip and, oh, I can't remember, there were loads of them. So I wanted to get them all there in advance. So my machine after yesterday, do you remember Pepe Le Pew? My machine would be going, le puff, le pant, le puff, le pant. <laughs> oh, Deirdre's got a, a Benina she was gifted in 1987. Wow. Uh, Monday, the 1st of January. You're going to get um, all of your details there on the 1st of January. That's, the, that's, that's next year's project. So even though it's a bank holiday, you, it'll all be on the website on the 1st. Um, Gina, look at my mouth. She's beautiful. There's, there's so much detail on this as well. Look, she's got all these little beads and brooches. She's got a crown. She's got pants on. <laughs> Satin pants. She's beautiful. I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon when I opened her. She's gorgeous. Lisa, thank you. Um, TNL's Nana, my talking machine would tell me what a great job I was doing. It would praise my straight lines and fabric choices. And also, <laughs> also tell me when the, oh, mistletoe mouse is nice. Tell me when the bobbin was getting low. Uh, right, let's get this started. Oh, slip stitching is another one I'm doing for um, Sew Magazine. Um, I like to put my knot inside the seam and then fold this over. And I'm going to catch the edge of the fold. Use the same colour thread. If your binding is a different colour to the back, and use the same colour thread as the binding. And then I'm going to get into the fabric and out again, about a quarter of an inch apart, and just catch the fold of the fabric. So go directly underneath here. It's a little bit like a ladder stitch. And then come out into the fold. Straight across from that one, in there, and out into the fold. And it's actually quite quick. in there and out in and out and do that all the way around and it's um it doesn't actually take that long because it's not a big project but this is another one of those kind of techniques that i love doing i just find it so rewarding when those little stitches just disappear and i know you're going to put a a plant on it or something and it'll never be turned over and nobody will ever see the back unless you're giving it as a gift of course but um, it's like having a nice lining inside a jacket. It's just nice to know that it's there, even if nobody else ever sees it. So anyway, I'm not going to do that now, but that's all I'm going to do all the way around. And that's what we're going to end up with. So again, that's all hand stitched all the way around the edge, might have done the corners again. And that's what it's like from the front. I've got two of them now. Right, so that's it. I'm about done. Um, the one I'm going to Perfect is adding a zipper onto tote bags. Um, it would be a nice Christmas gift, wouldn't it, Linda? And the thing is, they're, they're reasonably quick to make. So if you do have a last minute gift, um, you could make a few of them. And it, it could be a pot holder or a, a, something to put a plant pot on, that kind of thing would be quite nice. Um, so, and it's just folding fabric. It's, it's, it does look complicated, doesn't it? But it's just folding up fabric. Um, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for a, a year of learning and enormous amount being continually inspired and a load of fun with the Yatta Wednesdays and Saturdays has been a personal lifeline. Thank you so much. Um, Julie, I don't know what we're doing on Wednesday. Um, I'm hoping that um, next year we'll calm down a little bit, to be honest. Um, do, you set a, do you see so up to the point of the mitre? Um, well, on the back, let me show you. Yeah, it's been a rather hectic year this year, and I, I, I'm right up, I've got so many deadlines, but I'm hoping after January the 7th, because um, <laughs> that's my deadline for the So Maddie book, um, things will be a little bit calmer, so I can plan things ahead a little bit more. Because I, 
I, I was trying to get really ahead so I could let you know this is what we're going to be doing for the month and I'm like two days before thinking, well I don't know what I'm doing yet um, so yes I do need to um, I do need to get ahead with that have a little bit more time with it right so I have folded the fabric over like that I like to sew right up to what oh, could do the symbol in there out there up to where I'm going to turn it and then I'll just put a stitch in there to hold it in place and then we'll fold that over there and just kind of maneuver it so that the edges here meet up and then I'll put another couple of stitches to hold that in place there and so if you wanted to sew into the mitre that's fine it's not going to come undone I've, I've, I never bother with that but you could do a little stitch along here and along that side if you wanted to but I don't bother and then just carry on around the next side so I think that's what you meant but that, that's what I do so right up into the corner then just a few stitches to really secure that before I carry on make that nice and neat I love a mitre corner look how pretty that is I say so myself um yeah bobbin's bobbin's gone she's left a better mess and she's out of here i shall see you on wednesday i'll try and let you know beforehand what we're doing and um yes the next saturday is christmas day and i shall see you for about an hour on christmas day afternoon see this is where i normally set up a I shall see you again on Wednesday and I haven't got one um, <laughs> so I'll do that one again um, okay so yes Wednesday I'm going to be live at four o'clock in the afternoon on my Facebook page on the Debbie Shaw Sewing Facebook page and on YouTube next Saturday which is Christmas Day it'll be four o'clock in the afternoon on my Facebook page and on YouTube as well no sewing next Saturday but we're going to have a bit of fun we're going to have a quiz and I'm going to get some more Christmas decorations up and I've, I have a brand new ditty for you which I wrote last night as well um, so that's what um, that's what we're doing then um, Bramley here on Christmas Day at four o'clock yes Will you be doing a YouTube video as I joined in too late to watch? Do you know, Pauline, I think I might do. I might do a different coloured one because I actually quite enjoyed making that. Yeah, let's do a YouTube video. Oh, here she is. Hello. Um, but thank you for... Oh, you're not going to sit down, are you? No. You're all wet. Is it raining? You don't like the rain, do you? Good girl. Um, so I'll see you again on Wednesday. Thanks for your company today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you wanted to join the Half Yard Club, it'd be nice to have you there for next year as well. So come and be part of our huge growing club with uh, the thousands of us, literally, there's almost 4,000 of us now. And um, yeah, come and be part of the club if you can. It'd be nice to see you there. Um, right, I'm making alphabet letters for birthday presents. That's a nice idea. Marilyn's going, I'm now you go first. You hang up first. <laughs> Olive, and thank you very much. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Lisa, as well, and thank you again. I like nice. I think she's beautiful. She's always going to be in here. She's, yeah, you'll always see her, I think, when I can. Um, thank you, Gina. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Connie. Can't remember the name. Oh, sorry, not talking to me, I don't think. I'm going. Um, I shall see you again on Wednesday. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.